Hi, this is James from the Hornball Technical Support Team and this is a short tutorial to show you how to set up escalation notifications. Um, now this is based on 7.5.0 and ITSM 3.4.14. Um, now this particular options I'm showing you in this tutorial had come in on uh, ITSM 3.4 so this would only apply to um, those who are on that particular application version. Um, however, I'll also state that um, during this process I'll show you uh, uh, what other options are available for escalations for prior to ITSM 3.4. So, um, the first thing I'm going to show you is um, the SLA that I'm going to use in this instance. So I'm going to go to Manage Service Level Agreements and Test SLA. What you'll see is um, in my priority here, I have set up a uh, response time of 16 minutes, fixed time 32 hours. And first thing I'm going to do is create an escalation trigger for uh, 16 minutes before the response time is met. So that's pretty much instantly as soon as the call is logged. And within the properties of that, I'm just going to escalate it to the group. Now we will be using this script down here in the right hand side to do with invoke VPME script. Uh, but before we get on to that, we just need to define the actual escalation emails themselves. So in previous versions, um, you used to use the, the option on the trigger to send an email to a particular contact. And what that would do is that would send a predefined um, email template which you couldn't actually uh, amend. So this will send a particular email template and there's not too much you can do about it in terms of what's actually on on the email, who it sends to etc. But now there's options that's been added in uh, which I can show you. So we have a tab here in the process settings um, for escalation emails. So here this has been added in and this is very much role based in terms of um, who you want to send emails to depending on what's happening on the ticket. So um, on here you'll see it initially looks like it's quite a lot in terms of what it's doing but it's, um, our advice is to use these out of the box particular uh, roles but you can go right into the nitty gritty you can see within the actual call match condition it gets you can get quite complex in terms of the rule for it to match and what you want it to do so as a general um, sort of basics around this you can see for this customer one which has been defined for any kind of escalations that you want to actually send an email to the customer for when it's actually breached your particular trigger so first things we can see is that what template do you actually want to send to them um, so you can select your shared mailbox from this particular uh, drop down here you can select which template you want to send and you can also send an email to a particular contact or even to your support email box to say um, this has failed to actually send um, now if we go down to the source of the email so you're saying here um, who you, would you like this to match with, who do you want to, to actually send it to. Because this has already been pre-configured you can see that this is actually matching with a particular field. Um, so you can obviously specify particular people here, obviously that won't be, that won't be associated with like a customer, but maybe sp uh, specific customers. But here on this particular version this is a matching with all customers, so this is matching with the customer ID on the call. So that makes sure it picks up the right person who's actually logged the call. And um, so you can write your own custom conditions here, like I said before, in terms of picking up particular people. Um, and that can be quite complex. So um, if you want to keep it purely simple of uh, you know uh, sending to a particular customer or analysts, um, you can see you can stick with these predefined versions. So you can see the database linking is actually going to the user DB table, which is the customer table, and uh, where to actually match with the with the customer itself. So you don't need to change anything here. Um, this is already enabled. Um, the only area which we need to specify this customer role is within that trigger that we created. So I'm going to close that down. I'll quickly show you that these other ones are slightly reconfigured um, in terms of it's checking the owner from uh, the analyst table. So it's checking who the call's with, like the group manager, line manager, etc. Um, so if we go back into that low priority and our 
escalation trigger that we had created. Um, what I'm going to do is just tick that checkbox to say invoke VPME script. I'm just going to type in escalation notification. And here you're typing in all of the roles that you'd like to actually trigger. So you could say customer, line manager, etc. So I'm just going to stick with customer and I'm going to click on update. So therefore this is now in the system and this is now going to send an email, that email template that we've seen previously, um, which I can quickly show you again. Um, I have a slight issue with these things here duplicating but um, as you can see you can edit these if you want you know you can do anything you like with these particular templates and now if I log a call let's go with a test subject and what I'm going to do is just go into uh, log and take which means it won't set the actual response time and obviously we set a response trigger so this is, should pretty much instantly um, escalate so I'm just going to wait for it to do that okay so you now you can see that the status has changed to the escalated group which is, means that um, the call has been escalated so let's just check whether our notification has been sent um, I haven't fully configured email so it's going to show in the deleted items here um, you can see our template has been sent and it should sent to Alan Castle which it has so that's worked fine um, so just a few other tips around this um, obviously you might want to just think about who you want to send your escalation um, emails to um, what you want to include in them particular uh, emails. Uh, if you want to add in further variables, obviously you can follow the tutorial already made for the um, email templates. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much simple enough. You don't need to make it too complicated because you've got them uh, example ones out of the box. Or if you don't have them there, uh, please contact the support team and we'll be able to supply you with them. So any questions, uh, let us know.